Hi, I'm Jacob Klingensmith, president of Tamarack Aerospace Group, and I'm happy to be here with Rich Pickett, showing off our, his brand new upgrade on the CJ. Hi, I'm Rich Pickett with uh, Personal Wings. T. Gray, our son and I are here in Sandpoint, Idaho, to pick up the CJ with brand new winglets. We get to take it home on its maiden flight. Looking forward to it. Hey, Rich. <laughs> Hi, Jacob. Nice to, to see you. you. So tell me about your experience with Tamarack winglets. I know you've flown other planes with the winglets, but tell me about your experience. The first time I used your winglets was on your CJ3 that you used for the development. Uh -huh. So I've flown them a couple of times. I wrote an article, of course, in Twin and Turbine about the article, about the uh, winglets. And then um, I've flown them on the CJ3s, and I've flown them on the CJ, which this puppy is. Okay, great. And what was the experience? Like, what did, what did you experience when you were flying those as opposed to other other planes that didn't have the upgrade? Besides them just looking really cool on the ramp. <laughs> of course they <laughs> That's important, cool. Jacob. Important. That's important. Uh -huh. You know, you got to have the cool factor. Uh -huh. um, it, they're really fascinating because the way that, of course, you know the design better than I do. Uh, there's several things I've, I've noticed with it. Uh, let's first talk about the turbulence, all right? Mm -hmm. Let's say you're up there and you hit a little turbulence. And then all of a sudden, you'll see the tacks move slightly, uh -huh. right, doing their, their job. Exactly. So when it exceeds 1.25 Gs, right, I've studied your course, which is a very good course, um, uh, they'll activate, right, and they'll move. They'll either go a maximum 20 degrees up or 10 down. Okay. So that helps. And the cool thing about that is not just, I know you put the, the tacks here to do the load alleviation for the extended wings, which makes it easier for you because then you don't have to stiffen the entire wing. That's right. But it also really helps in turbulence just overall. So that's okay. one thing I've noticed is that the ride, it's really cool to be in turbulence or even if you induce it by just moving the control wheel a little bit, right? And then it just dampens it out. So the other thing I've noticed, <coughs> especially in the CJ2 and the, in the CJ, so the 525 and the 525 Alpha, um, is that these aircraft, especially if they're not the FADEC versions, right? The 1 Plus and the 2 Plus. Mm -hmm. You know, it's still advantageous. Uh, on a warm day, it's really hard to get these things to take off at gross weight uh, above the mid 30s. Right. Right? And if you're at ISA plus almost anything, then it's, it's very difficult. So, mm -hmm. what I typically do, in fact, in this plane in particular, because this is one we're flying the most now, plus other CJs I was just flying the other day, is that I don't plan for those high altitudes. I don't plan for 38. I don't plan for 41. I don't plan for those initially. I always do a step climb because once you get up to those altitudes, it's very difficult to get above the mid 30s. Um, not always. I mean, it depends on the temperature, right? And uh, obviously, if you're below your gross weight on takeoff, you have a better chance of getting it. But you kind of limit it, right? And so frequently, for example, in this CJ, we do a lot of two, two and a half hour flights. And so and it's down in New Mexico, and it's really hard for us to plan for anything over 3.8. In fact, initially it would be 3.60. So what I've noticed with the planes with the winglets is that typically, even at the gross weights, I can pretty much plan to go to max altitude, and that's where I get my big savings, right? I can get up right. there quicker instead of doing these right. step climbs. Or even if I do the step climb, then I'm there less than I am with a uh, flat wing uh, CJ. Right. So if I do that, then that improves my range just right off the bat, so I can get up there. And also, it seems to be, and I've got some numbers we're working on now to record that uh, for our own personal. I know you have a lot of numbers from your experiences. Sure. Is once I get up there, since I'm approaching it at a little bit higher speed, then I can get up as what we call the step, right, or get up to that maximum cruise speed. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you sit up there. The other day, I was timing it, you know. In, in a flat in a flat wing CJ just for fun, you know, and you get up. It took me nine minutes to get up to the maximum speed. So with these, it'll help reduce that. Yeah. And so what altitude was that? That was 41. Okay. All right. So it just really yeah. slow to finally get up to those speeds. Sure. So that that's one of it. So I've got the turbulence. I've got mm -hmm. the ability to climb, mm -hmm. right, a little different profile, so that I can get up to altitude mm -hmm. faster, and that that mm -hmm. helps with the the. the uh, with the range right there. Sure. And then I've noticed, and you've got more data than I have, obviously, mine's just anecdotal from, I keep records of it, but my flights, is that I found that the, the another way to get more range with the active winglet is to bring the power back a little bit. Sure. So you just bring the power back, so we call making fuel, right? You look at your fuel at destination, or over destination, and you get an idea of how much fuel you have. So you can bring it back and you'll 
you'll get a little bit better performance. Um, and then, you know, the capability um, for short field performance, they just help just a little bit so that if you need to, you know, I always fly at VREF anyway. Okay. But if you went a couple knots or a few knots below VREF, you even have that additional safety margin. But I always make sure I fly at, at VREF. Okay. So those are the things. So it looks really cool. Uh -huh. <laughs> it helps with turbulence, helps with that range, helps with getting up to that altitude. Uh, recently, some of the ISO temperatures I've had as high as plus 15, 18, and so forth. I'm sure. like, oh, you know, just sit there, just yeah, sort of a long time to get up it makes to a altitude. Big difference. And, and if you don't realize that higher altitude makes a big difference, every thousand feet is 3.2 percent better in specific range. People sure. don't realize how much of a difference that makes sometimes. Yeah, yeah. and so I fly max mm -hmm. whenever I can. Mm -hmm. You know, if I fly the the CJ threes, I'm up at 43, 45 all the time. Okay. You know, anything more than a, a couple hours, uh, two and a half hours, I go up there. Yeah. It's just it's just worth it to be able to do it. Right. So it gives that. So that's one of the things. And then also, of course, since on the CJs, like you know, all the 525s, you're using lead air for the de-icing. Get up to altitude, and if you still have some icing up there, you don't have a lot of power reserve. So they sure. should help a little bit going up there. So it works really well. Cool. So that those are the some of the advantages that I've seen of, of the winglet. Great, and we're looking at a CJ1 right now. What what specifically was in your mind when you recommended to the owner that he get the winglets for the CJ1? This one is the one that Tigre and I manage, right, and fly, and we are looking at, and that is to give us just a little bit more range and okay. to get up to the altitude. So those are the two reasons. Our hangar is wide enough, right, uh -huh. to be able to fit it, so that wasn't any issue whatsoever, but the ability to be able to get up to altitude faster mm -hmm. and get above some of the storms, because mm -hmm. I really like to get above and stay out of the storms as best yeah. I can, and that additional range. Cool. Uh, on our flights, we're typical flights are two and a half, three hours anyway, so we're not really that critical, but it does get to be that situation if we've got to fly low. Right. So I like to be able to make sure that you know, we can get up there when we can and get above the storms. Right. So it's going to be that. passenger comfort for the turbulence. It's going to be reducing our fuel stops a little bit, using a little bit less fuel overall, mm -hmm. extending it. Because mm -hmm. anytime you can extend your range, especially when you go down to Mexico, the better off you are because there's so few airports down there. Sure. So when you're contemplating going mm -hmm. down to Puerto Vallarta or other places like that, even from San Diego, you have to figure out, okay, and coming back, how are you going to be able to do it and where you want to stop? Sure. What's your alternate? So yeah. it just helps with the, the flight planning. And uh, so that's mm -hmm. all those are reasons that uh, we recommended to be able to put this on, on the bird. Great, I love hearing that. So another question I had, I saw in your YouTube channel that yes. you were trying out SAF, Sustainable Aviation Fuel, yes. in this plane. Tell us about that experience. I think we need to do it, right? I mean, there are compelling reasons to use sustainable aviation fuel. Mm -hmm. And now they, in fact, in ex extend that. You look at the new unleaded fuels from GAMI and sure. SWIFT right. for um, piston aircraft, which I think is essential to get the lead out, literally, mm -hmm. uh, pollution and so forth. So you have to look at the sustainable aviation fuel, and, and, and um, I fully believe in it. I'll pay extra to put it in an airplane if mm -hmm. necessary, because I think it's important. Now, and then there's different kinds of SAF. I'm not an expert on SAF, but so you've got to see what is that offset. Are they using food products to be able to do that where they sure. could use that for food? You hate to use that when, a pro, uh, you know, vegetation, corn, et cetera, could be used for, for fuel, I mean for food. But if you look at the ones that use other biomass and so forth, so the sustainable aviation fuel, the one that we used before when I used it in this bird, um, goes through the process and it's using some biomass that otherwise would would decompose and turn into all the carbon dioxide as well. Right. So uh, it, what it basically does is helps reduce that footprint. Okay. And I think it's important. I think it's important whenever we can try to do that. United Airlines and Continental for years have been testing that on their aircraft. Right. And yeah. so I think it's an important thing to do whenever we can. Yeah. Was it difficult to find? No. Signature had it. Okay. at San Jose, the last time I used it, so occasionally get it. Uh, Clay Lacey has it, for example, at, uh, at John Wayne. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, you know, it's not prevalent everywhere, but it'll, it will increase over time. Yeah. yeah. I think it's important to do that. Good. Good. 
So last question. Sure. Uh, what would you tell somebody who has a Citation Jet, they're thinking about the upgrade with the winglets, what would you tell them? It's interesting to see that, right? So this, uh, that's straight CJ, right? And the twos and so forth, that's where you're going to have the most demonstrable impact, sure. right? Overall for everything. For performance, yeah. Exactly. For the performance and the range, we talked all about that. Yeah. Uh, I think it's it's an individual decision of what you want out of your aircraft. If you really want to maximize the performance on an amazing airframe, the Citation 525 series is really, I just love flying all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is a great addition, right? So what you get, you get all those things. You get the turbulence um, amelioration a little bit. You get a little bit extra range. Uh, you have all these other features that we talked about. It's a good thing to do. They have to sort of pencil out and see what, what it's going to do. Yeah. Um, as with any upgrade, you have to sort of calculate what the benefits are versus the cost. And if you do it strictly that you're going to save 100, 200, 300, 400 pounds of fuel, it's going to take a long time on payback, even oh, yeah. though you can get a high, your higher resale value on the airplane. So you have to look at how's it going to fit your mission. Is it going to help you reduce those fuel stops? Can you go a little bit farther? If your weather, if I always look at range um, for a couple of reasons. One, I do it gives me options for weather. Okay. So if I have right. longer range, and I've got weather, it gives me a better opportunity. It widens the my circumference of safety of zone, safety zone right. that I can do right. Yeah. So that's I think that's important to be able to do that. Okay. And if you get up there, and if I can get up to 41 faster, that makes and 40 faster, it makes my life easier. You bet. As a pilot, and also I fly these for my own personal trip. Uh huh. Good. Good. Rich, thank you. Hey, welcome, Appreciate Jacob. It. Thanks. Thanks for all the work that your team did. Yeah. Glad to do it. The winglets, they look gorgeous. They do. Really nice.